Hey, All right. Everybody. Hello. Hey, Mark. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Hey, Andy. I'm good, man. How are you? How are you, Andy? I'm good, Sam. How are you? Yeah, awesome, man. Good to see you guys. All right. So second episode of The Guitar Show. I want to thank everybody oh. who's tuning in tonight and everybody that tuned in last or two weeks ago. We're planning on doing this uh, every week or every other week. Uh, this week and next week, though, we're doing two weeks in a row. So uh, I'm Mark from 8 Minute Acts coming at you from Atlanta, Georgia. And we've got Simon Morrell from Sydney, Australia. Good day, folks. How you going? And Andy from <laughs> Massachusetts. Where in Massachusetts, Andy? South, near, near Cape Cod there, Massachusetts. Near Cape Cod. Andy's yep. near Cape Cod. So everybody's near the beach except for me. <laughs> we have Lake Lanier here in, uh, in Georgia. And uh, everybody gets drunk, goes out on the lake, and there's always a few casualties every year. So we've got a great show planned for tonight. We are going to talk about the future of guitar amps. And uh, we were talking a little bit about this before the show, and it seems that should be some good discussion tonight because Simon and I <laughs> have opposing views on the future of guitar amps. So that should make for some good, uh, good conversation. And uh, we're going to um, we're going to do another trivia contest tonight. And I've uh, received a few entries or a few submissions for the campfire favorite campfire song i asked uh viewers last uh show to uh submit a verse and chorus of their favorite campfire song and i've received uh received three and i received one request so i'm gonna do one live myself so um awesome. without further ado let's get into it so let's start off um simon why don't you talk a little bit about uh how you feel the future of guitar amps is going to go and uh you think you well, think tube amps are going to stick around for a while, huh? I love tube amps. <laughs> I am literally such a throwback; it's ridiculous. If there's a chance of you know, you know, listening to music from the 1960s and 1970s versus the stuff that you hear, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not going to be one of those old guys that's like, oh, music now is rubbish because it's it's really, really not. There's loads of great stuff, but I just love the sounds on those old records. I just, I just think it's just a beautiful old sound. Plug it in, turn it up until it sounds good. Press record, just awesome. Uh, so I am a sucker for that stuff. You know, this kind of thing. Uh, I've got this actually plugged in the moment into. Uh, I don't know how well it comes over the internet, but I've got a. I'm very, very lucky. I spent uh, ages looking for it but i've got a, a mid 1960s fender deluxe reverb this is plugged into nice. so that is 100 percent my thing i try and use minimum minimal pedals i mean i do have a pedal board um i've got what have i got this morning i've just got a drive and a delay and a looper and i use the that's what i use for lessons and stuff so i can demonstrate different things but effectively that has always this is like it took me a long time to get to this situation of having the Fender Deluxe Reverb. Um, I absolutely love it. When you get to that kind of sweet spot, the sound on it is, there's literally nothing like that. And um, and I guess, I suppose my sort of, I've got a bit of a story about that. A few years ago, I was filling in for a guy and it was part of a club show, like a club uh, show doing um, hits, uh, sort of 60s and 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s hits. And so it wasn't really about me being me being part of the band. Like there was the band and then there was like two or three, four singers that would come out and sing songs. And it was more about them. They're all, you know, sparkly in a spotlight. And then the back the band is truly like a backing band, right? So I was, I was filling in last minute for this, this thing and they had um they had it all set up it was actually pretty awesome you basically just turned up with your guitar plugged in off you went it was like i was a rock star and um uh the setup was a kemper right and so the guy whose rig it was that was the touring rig it was a kemper and there was because it was 50s it was just you know All etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. And um oh, but great songs. And but the simple sounds were simple, right? So I had like one ginormous button in front of me, which was like a boost button for the solos, right? 
and all of my sound was coming to me. I had a, like the setup was amazing. It was a great big stage and stuff. And um, I had a monitor where all my guitar sound was coming to me. And so, you know, you're doing the... You know, that kind of thing. And because I was in a show that I wasn't part of the band, it was actually fine. The sound was great. The sound was like, it really sounded like an amp. But the thing that you couldn't get was the feel mm -hmm. of the amp. And it didn't really matter because I was, like I said, I was just in the shadows doing my parts and I was never in the spotlight or whatever. And I did probably two or three shows just filling in. And look, they're great. And the sound out front, I'm sure, was easily easy to manage and all that sort of stuff. But I just did, you didn't get the, of the amp. And, you know, I've played in tiny places and bigger places and stuff, but you turn the amp up and it's, you're playing it. It's just, it's just awesome. And you get the feel and you feed off the feel. You play better. It's sexier. <laughs> and it just, a, for me, that was my experience of, not that I've got heaps of experience with modeling stuff. I absolutely do not. Um, but that was my experience. And I just think, I think you can't replicate the sound of the vibe, the sound of the amp coming at you and just filling you with inspiration and you playing 20% better than you otherwise would have played. Because so this it was is interesting. Very, I'm going to cut you off real quickly. Salvador yeah. says that the first guitar he played was a Fender Mustang with a Fender Reverb Amp 1965 from a neighbor, uh, neighbor. And the first song that he learned was Pipeline. Awesome. That's pretty cool. That Thanks is very cool. That, I love that. I love that yeah. surf rock stuff. So I'm, I'm going to tell you a, a, a story about um, the one time that I used serious vintage equipment. A friend of mine from high school, I ran into him years later and he started taking lessons from me and he let me borrow his. Uh, his dad's 59 Fender Stratocaster and 59 Fender Amp. And nice. so I went to go sing the first song on the first set and I got electrocuted. I literally got <laughs> knocked unconscious. So that was my, my experience with vintage equipment. So Rock and roll. Yeah. That's rock and roll, yeah. Andy, I want to <laughs> let you – I have so many things that I want to respond to some of the stuff Simon said, but uh, I want to let you uh, have a turn, Andy. So tell us, uh, well, tell us what you think. Well, like I started off, you know, I'm a little younger than you guys. So my first amp was a little Gorilla Solid State, I think five watts. Then I went to a Fender Champ 110 Solid State. Then I moved up to this guy, which is a Valve State. So as a Valve preamp and then a Solid State uh, power amp. Um, but then, you know, I've been using this 20 years. It's kind of a modeler in there, too. Oh, that, those things are amazing. Yeah, I've had this. It's solid. It has tons of different amps in there, tons of different effects in there. Um, and then my YouTube channel and then recording, all I use is um, digital. I use amp modelers yeah. and effects that. So I pretty much record everything clean, vocals, bass, and oh, just right. direct signal, right? And then in post, I change the amp sim, the cabinet, the IR uh, effects. Only thing I really yeah, do right. is... Some, if I want to do something pre, I'll use Wawa or something like an expression thing. Mm -hmm. But I can always reamp. I even five years from now, I can totally change the song by changing the effects and the amps and all that yeah. stuff. Vocals. Too. Uh, sorry. Yeah. It's so, sorry to. Yeah, I was going to say, Mark. I was just going to finish off. That that's amazing that you can do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not trying to say like, oh, it's rubbish. You know, don't use it. I just that was my vibe of the thing on stage. But I've got to say, the. It's a bit like their high risk, high reward tube amps. Like they are a pain. <laughs> they blow up. Uh, they're noisy. Um, you know, they are really tricky, but it's worth it. Hi, Lisa. How are you that's going? It. So, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll so that, that's what I reckon. So, a couple of things come to mind here. One is. Uh, Metallica decided a few years ago not to bring gear on the road with them anymore. They yeah. just uh, they were doing everything digitally, which I thought was kind of a drag because I, I, I agree that a, a stack of 
you know, marshals or a stack of high watts like Alex Lifeson used to do um, is, like you said, sexy and cool and rock and roll. But it just comes down to uh, convenience and cost effectiveness. And I know what a lot of players were doing by the mid 2000s when the DSPs, the digital signal processors, were getting better and better. I remember Neil Schoen and Steve Lukather both saying that they were playing through the uh, Vox AC4 close mic, which is a you know little four yeah, yeah, four yeah. watt small amp close mic, yeah. and all the cabinets they had weren't even loaded with speakers. They were all yeah, dummies. Old, they were going through the yeah. house. That's an old gag, right? I think Brian yeah. May from Queen used to do that. Yeah, too. yeah, Brian May too. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll tell you, I have a little bit. I'm a little biased on this. Um, I. Uh, and I understand what you're saying about the uh, the valve amps, the tube amps, you know, giving you more push, you know, and you can get more bite out of it. Certainly, uh, I think certainly with clean tones, you know, if you're playing more of a telly style, the uh, the valve amps really respond extremely well. And I don't have a Helix or or a Kemper, but I've got the um, the um, Atomic amplifier, which is uh, I believe is the same DSP as the Helix. It's a little bit less expensive, but uh, I've, I've used that for many gigs, just going directly into the board. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have anything to feel as far as the, the air pushing behind me, but I can tell you as far as being able to control and break up and all those little oh. nuances that uh, yeah. the tube amps get, I'm getting it. I'm getting it with the new signal processors, you know, have mm -hmm. that now. And uh, I think that uh, if you watch uh, the videos, my buddy likes to call them the cork sniffers, you know, all the uh, people that talk about how the, you know, the creme de la creme of all amplifiers, the, um, the, well, what, what the, the Dumble, the Dumble uh, Overdrive well, Special, guys. the one that's going for Don't half a million bucks. You know, those, uh, those amps, people are using $25 pedals and they're fooling, you know, the Andertons or, you know, quote unquote experts as far as, you know, which yeah. one is the, uh, mm -hmm. is the real amp. So the technology yeah. has just come so far. So I totally agree with that. You know, um, I mean, there's, there's actually albums I've played on where, um, I've gone to do sessions for, for, for records and particular studios have a, a bias one way or the other. Right. And, and one guy I went to, to do, go and do a record with once he, um, I bought all the gear and he was like, and I was like, Oh, where do I load my gear? And he goes, Oh, don't worry about that. You won't need that. Have you got a guitar? And I was like, yeah, well, of course I'm coming to do a session. I bought a guitar and he's like, you don't need anything else. And like Andy said, I did it. The sound, I had the sound, the post sound in one can and the other sound in the other. And I mean, you know, I listen to the record now and guitar sounds great. But it's not a, um, yeah, it just sounds great. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know that it wasn't everything plugged in. So I, I'm going to tell you a funny story. So uh, do you guys know the band The Revivalists? They they had several hits. They they were headlining uh, Music Midtown, which is one of the is the the big music festival in Atlanta. At the time, they had several modern rock radio number one hits, and so they were playing a um, a radio promotion only show at Smith's, which is one of the the premier small clubs to play here in Atlanta. So it came to pass that I had a gig that night at Smith's as well, and unbeknownst to me, there's a couple stages. So it was loud, it was crowded, I was running a little bit late, and I had my atomic amplifier in a backpack. I had no amp with me, and I had my guitar in a case, I had my telly. And I go to the front and I just show the guitar. So the bouncer goes, points, you know, go ahead, go in, you know, cut the line. So I go in, I go to the next area and I show the guitar. The bouncer goes, go that way. So I get to the next one, I don't know where to go. And he's like, up the stairs. So I go up the stairs and the revivalists are on the stage. So I'm thinking, okay, we must be on next. I didn't know who they were. So I go on the stage and I start tuning my guitar and I'm playing while they're playing. And my phone rings. And one of the guys in the band says, where are you? And I'm like, I'm on stage tuning. He goes, dude, we're, we're, we're started. I mean, we're, there's another stage downstairs. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know that. So I was literally on these, these, you know, these big guys stage sitting there tuning like a, it was pretty funny, pretty funny. funny. So. So I'll tell you, I bought, as far as modelers go, I swallowed the Johnson Millennium ad back in 1997. I spent $1,700. And if somebody out there wants to look up what that is in today's dollars, 
probably like three thousand bucks yeah, on this seventy five million bitcoin. Yeah, <laughs> this, yeah. On the Johnson Millennium, it was the worst amplifier. It had it was supposed to be the next great thing, and I think like six months after it came out, Line Six introduced the Pod, and so for one hundred and fifty dollars, you could get a sound that was better, completely better than that. So but that thing was amazing when that came out. The Pod, the right? Pod. Yeah, the Pod yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Remember the Zoom five hundred five? It was like yep. a yeah. small plastic one. That's, that's some yeah. decent sounds in there. And that was, I, used to, I think, a hundred bucks. I got that in 96, 97 there. I used to use when I used to do those acoustic guitar gigs. I used to use this little floor zoom thing, mm -hmm. just to get kind of a bit of reverb, some chorus, sometimes that kind of stuff. Well, you know what's just interesting really about Zoom is Zoom used to be. I think for most of us, Zoom was the inexpensive guitar pedal for people in the know and on a budget mm -hmm. but um they've really come a long way because mm -hmm. i use the zoom h6n i wish i had it in i normally have it right next to me but uh mm -hmm. it's a um it's like a field recorder and that's pretty much what 75 percent of youtubers use yeah, to nice. record their audio you know it's got some stereo condenser mics i use you know i plug all yeah, the other external mm -hmm. mics into it it's got phantom power it's fantastic so all yeah. right um so it sounds like we're more in agreement than uh, anybody out there have any opinions on the future of tube amps i think here's what i think i think that right now our generation has grown up with it and the nostalgia mm -hmm. factor and i think that when we die off i think tube amps will die off with us and i'm gonna make uh, an analogy no. i'm gonna make an analogy on that so i it's remember funny. 20 years ago when photographers my friend mike dinger said uh He's, it's really his last name. He's a photographer in New York. He said, you know, uh, digital will never replace film. Never happen. Never happen. And now, except for some, you know, super cutting edge on the fringe, people that still use film, no, no, you know, uh, wedding photographer, any photographers that are taking lots of pictures, you know, concert photographers, nobody uses film anymore. Yeah. And I think the same thing is going to happen. The technology is going to get better and better. And, and the other thing is they're going to stop making those parts, those transistors and those tubes. I mean, right now there's only three or four, uh, I think three or four factories in the world that still mm -hmm. make vacuum tubes. So mm -hmm. the, yeah, the parts be right. are going to be... become hard, harder and harder to come by. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what I said about smaller. vinyl. The market will get smaller and smaller. Like there's still film. They still make 35 millimeter film. Right. But it'll be small. Yeah, yeah I think like, that's right. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I think you're wrong. I think it's coming back. I'm going to, I'm actually going to live a little like, bit longer than it's I gonna be like vinyl just to prove you're wrong. It's so going to be at, like vinyl, vinyl Look records. at vinyl compared to streams. Yeah, yeah, I know, but yeah that's a good point. Nice, thank, thank you. Vinyl. Yeah. I mean, what, like, what, a million vinyl records are sold a year? Probably a billion streams a year? So, you so know, Simon, you yeah. were just victim look, look of a, of a market. Beautiful it looks. It looks so beautiful, though the vinyl record, right? Simon, but, you were just you were just a victim of a Mark Twain quote. Mark Twain said, "Nothing in life is more annoying than a good example." <laughs> <laughs> but like, ask ask a you know a fifteen year old. You know, teenagers drive. They've always driven music, right? Ask them if they care about vinyl. Well, actually, not many do. Not many. Not do. many do, but some do. Yeah. Some do. I would say maybe less than ten percent care about buying. You know what? You know what the most popular album of record is right now? Kanye West. Mm -hmm. Kanye. And he's breaking records for streaming and all that. Yeah. Right. How many? How many people are buying his his record compared to streaming it or watching? How many? YouTube? How many people are buying his record full stop? Yeah, they're, they're streaming it. On, they're streaming it, it either yeah, YouTube or Spotify. Um, hmm. I just Jack, I think, Jack I think says, it would just be Jack very says, small. Jack says, think Chuck Berry um, on a modeling amp versus Fender Reverb. And, and Jack, I totally get what yeah. you're saying. I just think the technology is getting better and better in the break mm -hmm. and the natural feel mm -hmm. and the response on the guitars. As it continues to get better and better, I just think that as you know, our heroes and at, like Metallica, we were, I don't know if you were mm -hmm. on before, Jack, but we were talking about how Metallica went on tour without amplifiers. They went digital directly into, um, and that's Metallica. I mean, they're one of the last, you know the last bastion, the last hope for for rock and roll, right? I, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a big yeah. Metallica guy, but there's not many of those bands left. I mean, I totally like if you're a Metallica, I totally see the attraction of that—that that you go from place to place to place, and you basically, if you're the guitar player, you turn up with your USB thumb stick and you plug it into the other one, into the new one. It's like, bzz, 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 
and it loads up all your presets and you've had to take this thumbs it's like you know yeah. books versus the kindle sort of thing right so you know you you can take your kindle with you on holiday and you can sit on a beach wherever you are and you can have th f five million books with you yeah i totally get that i think it's convenience like you can make you can make uh food on the stove you can make food at home but it's a lot convenient to get takeaway or use a microwave yeah. same thing for you know especially younger generation want things instant plug it into your laptop plug it into your ipad boom yeah the other thing no, you said that, totally. the other yeah, thing you it. said simon so you play simon plays in a band uh called the soul messengers right that's right yeah and you guys do mostly original music yeah pretty much all original oh we we do some covers but we'll stuff them up you know so we'll when i was in a, when i was doing all original music i was i you know straight i was using my gibson gold tone you know straight and i had one pedal i mean i was doing everything with you know one or two tones, but but you know for YouTubers, for cover bands, you know for all that kind of stuff, it just you don't get the you don't get the different sounds you need. I mean, I bought the 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 um, Spark partly because I want to do a Van Halen video. I want to be able to dial mm -hmm. in a Van Halen tone. I want to you know I do a uh, Zeppelin video. I want to be able to, and they're not exact, but they're they're darn close. Man, right? I totally, I totally agree with that. One click of the button, Van Halen. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, like That's when it. I was playing in when I was playing in covers bands, the size of my pedal board was ridiculous because I needed all these different sounds, right? So I totally dig that. But you know, I'm just gonna. So I've given the tube amp. So I've got some. I do have a tiny bit of digital equipment in here. I've got a thing called a two notes captor yeah. torpedo captor X. And so what that bit of kit is, it's like a very exciting looking white box and it basically is an attenuator which basically takes the load of the amp so that means that you can still experience the breakup of the amp but the volume in the I've room, got one in that yeah yeah right exactly built in yeah the volume yeah. in the room is not gonna break you because the thing is you know people talk about how loud you know the the, the thing you always see on those forums is uh what wattage amp do i need to be able to keep up with the drummer Right. Mm -hmm. That's what and you like, yeah. and you get these people going, "Oh, you need a hundred watt amp." <laughs> you know, you not if not, not if you've got a class A tube amp. You get ten watts. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna kill people with that thing. Um, hey, but, who you know, out there wants to hear Simon bust something out, play something? Yeah. Right? So I just yeah. wanted to give you. I've just given it a bit more volume, so you'll have to tell me how the levels are, fellas. Okay. Right. Good. So is play. that breaking up a little bit? Should be breaking. Play up something a for us. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh... Yeah, right. And I'll give it a bit more, see if we can um, break the internet. Probably a bit too much, is it? Oh, nice guitar rake there. Nice rake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that is a sound <laughs> that kind of... The feel of it in here is awesome. And... Mm -hmm. So now I'm I'm at four on the amp, right? It goes to ten, not eleven. Uh, but you know you can get that. <laughs> Sounds good. So I don't know. I don't know how it comes over because I know. Yeah, that it sounds great. Can, we're compressed yeah. and compressed through all the YouTube and internet stuff. But you know, if I could have you all here in my room to hear how beautiful this thing sounds, you would with, be with me on the Tube Amp Crusade. Let me tell you that. For <laughs> so we're all invited to Australia to Sydney. Let's go. Come over. You're not allowed over at the moment. Our prime minister won't let you over. Uh, that's but right. COVID. When you are allowed, come over. Maybe we'll saying COVID on, ears, the, some, on the on the on the video on the will get, get more hits. Yeah, 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 Jack. Right. Jack, Jack is, I knew right. Jack was going to give you a thumbs up for that. Yeah, for me, sure, me Jack. Me and Jack, I, we're. 
Yeah, I mean, Simon did a good job make, making Jack's point, for sure. It does, it does sound good, so. I just Andy, you want it, why don't you break something out on the Solid State amp, Andy? See what you can come up with. <laughs> oh, I don't even have it plugged in right now. Okay. Right now, <laughs> right right. now I've got it in. Uh, it sounds really G. good not plugged in. Yeah, he's got a. Ooh. Play a little slide for us. You know what? Hey, you know what? Let's do. um. Since you're going to play slide, let's do a tune. Let's do. um. So one of the things that uh, we were going to do in the show is we were going, I'm going to do is I asked people at the last show, it was about campfire songs to submit a, um, a song, a verse and a chorus of a song. So I have three or four videos that I'm going to play for you all tonight. And, uh, but one of the viewers had a request for, uh, for Will and by, um, by Little Feet. So one of my favorite tunes, one of my favorite little George tunes. So, um, so I learned a little bit of it, and since Andy's an open G, Andy can mm -hmm. uh, can do some slide soloing over it. So this is goes out Maybe to could... uh, Moo and Montana. You could sing if you want, uh, Simon. Well, how about do some jazz hands as we go? You do jazz <laughs> hands. I've been warped by the rain, driven by the snow. I'm drunk and dirty, but don't you know that I'm a still and willing. Out on the road, late at night, you see my pretty Alice, her head like Alice. Dallas, Alice. And I've been from Tucson to Tucum, Carey. The hatch of Peter Tone above. Driven every kind of rig that's ever been made. Driven the back road till it wouldn't get wet. And if you give me weed, white sand, wine, and you show me a sign. I'll be willing to be moving. Take it away, Andy. I've been kicked by the wind, robbed by the sleet, had my head still in, but I'm still on my feet because I'm a still willing. Struggled some smoking folks from Mexico, I get big by the sun. Every time I go to Mexico, but I'm still. And I've been from Tucson to Tucum, Cary, to Hatch of Peter Tone Paul. Driven every kind of rig that's ever been made. Driven the back road so it wouldn't get way. If you give me weed, white sand, white, and you show me a sign. And I'll be willing to be moving. All right, a little little Oops. feet there for you. All right, I probably didn't sound that great. My echo cancellation is on. Yeah, that's right, guitar rabbi. I'm actually, believe it or not, my vocals and my guitar are coming through the microphone of my headset. That's what I've got set up tonight. So I was a little unprepared. So anyway, so that's that's Will, and so that goes out to. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break and we're going to play one of the submissions. And this one is by Lori Mishmash. Mm -hmm. So before I play this, I'll tell you a little bit about Lori. Lori does a live show every other Thursday night and hers is very interactive. She usually has a backing track and she plays uh, anybody that wants to do a jam to the various backing tracks can, I think this month, She's actually doing play your favorite 80s TV theme song. Yeah, that songs. was just a couple of days ago. On Thursday, did 80s favorite TV show. I did a yeah. Knight Rider to go on my okay. show. 
check out Night Rider, but it was awesome. And people did MacGyver, Family Ties, The Jeffersons. Um, so, go on her channels. You see all you see all the cool ones. I'm gonna wait for the '70s, 18, and I'm gonna do Love American Style. All right, so we're gonna play Lori Mishmash. We're gonna play her version of Let It Be. So let's check it out. It's nice. Lori is one of the few still among us who actually reads music, traditional music. Somebody asked me about this guitar. So um, it was Lisa. So I'll tell you a little bit about this guitar. So I bought this used. This is a, a Taylor GS Mini Custom Koa. And the cool thing about it is it actually has Koa bridge pins and Koa Ooh. tuners and a Koa wow. carved, I don't even know what you call it, the little plate that hides the, uh, what do you call the little plate that hides Trust the the uh, trust, rod. trust, trust rod, trust rod plate. Yeah, that's about as creative a name as the guitar show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on All now, right. I think the guitar show it does what I it says on the tin. It's so, a very pragmatic Australian vote name. Mm -hmm. So the good thing like about that is I don't think you can trademark that. I think it's too generic. So if anybody else out there has a guitar show, I say you know what? Why well, I say you know what? All right, so let's do the uh, <laughs> let's do the trivia contest now. This is okay. where I this is where I excel. I, I, I don't think, know uh, Andy, you're the quiz master today, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna we're gonna do ten questions. Um, first one gets it. You know, it's what what we see on YouTube. You know, so sometimes you hey, might yeah. put it there first, but what, whatever we see first. Uh, Mark, you gotta give them a, a chance. They gotta type it in and stuff. But yeah, that's not, right, Mark. Don't if, be too keen. If we don't get it for a little while, we'll give you the answers. But they're not too tough. Um, the first. The first couple questions. I don't know if you guys, Simon, do you, do you ever see Saturday Night Live back in the, do you ever no. watch that show? No, it's big mm -hmm. here. Norm MacDonald, unfortunately, just passed away. I was a big talked, fan yeah. of Norm MacDonald and Saturday Night Live. I, I, love, I love his backup singing on um, on Showbiz. Kid. Oh, Mike, it's Michael MacDonald. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so first couple questions about uh, SNL. They have some amazing musical guests. Every, every show is a new musical guest. Um, first question I'm put in the chat right now. It's um, let's see here. Now let me copy paste. Okay, what musical guest appeared on SNL the most at nine times? Oh, I know this one. Can I? Can, so uh, I was going to say, Andy, there's. I didn't look at your questions. I purposely didn't open the email when you sent right, me. I put, it, so I put I it in the, the chat answer. nine times. I know this one. Hey, what's up, Francis? How's it going? Could I guess? You have give to him wait. A give, give, him a give, them a, give them a chance but to. Uh... The next question is about a single guy, but this guy, this is his performing name. Well, I gave you a little clue. It's a guy. It's but, a guy. Uh, and he's, it, I think the oh, first one was in the 70s. So Lisa yeah. says Alec Baldwin. So she's, we're talking about musical guests. That's a good musical guess. guess. We talked yeah. about, uh, he's, been on, he's been on that a lot, though. I think he's hosted probably more than nine times. Not Alec Tommy Baldwin? Lee. Yeah, yeah. Tommy Lee. Not Tommy, Tommy Lee. Lee. I don't think it's Tommy, <laughs> Tommy Lee, no. no. I know. What do you guys uh, think? What do you guys think? So having never seen the show, I am going to go for Bruce Springsteen. No. What do you think, the reason you The reason you haven't seen the show is you, you know it as Sunday morning live, Simon. That's why. <laughs> that would be Sunday morning. Sunday morning in bed. Oh, uh, it's uh, Paul Simon. Paul Simon. Nine times. Oh. Yeah. So there you go. Next question. This rock star, so he's been in multiple bands, four different bands, appeared eleven times. 
on SNL as a musical guest. So four different bands, but he's, he's a rocker. He's very, he might be, he's one of the most famous rockers right now. Oh, I reckon. Oh, I think I know. I know. Um, and, four uh, different bands. Four different bands. If you oh. name the bands, that's extra credit too. If you yeah. get all the bands there. Slash, reckon... that's a good, that's a good one. Chris, is, one, guitar is, one of, is one of the bands the Recon Tours? Nope. Oh, I got the Neil wrong guy. That's, one a, the... that's a good. That's a good one too, because I think he did. Uh, Neil Young was with Pearl Jam one time. They did Rocket in the Free World. Yeah. And uh, and uh, uh, so it's, it's not Jack White then. Not Jack White. You just did an awesome uh, SNL, like right after Eddie Van Halen. I, I saw that. Away. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's good, Jack White. He used the Wolfgang too. He used the EVH Wolfgang on, uh, I think, one or two of the songs. Did he really? I didn't. I didn't yeah. see that, but uh, yeah. I heard it. I like. Yeah. I like that guy. He is obsessed by guitars. Right. Yeah, so Jack a White's rock... a guitar oh. guy for sure. Yeah. Is it Dave Grohl? <laughs> Dave Grohl. Yeah, I was gonna. That was gonna be my yeah. guess. So it was uh... Nirvana two times, Foo Fighters, and then them Crooked Crooked Vultures. With I with, went to um... see that band. Awesome band. Yeah, that was thing. awesome. All right. It's not really my kind of level of heaviness, I've got to say. Like, it's way heavier than my standard thing. Yeah, but I went to go and see them because of the guys in the band are amazing. Yeah. And So so I've got a $25 smoke. gift card for the winner here. It looks like I'm going to be keeping this gift card. <laughs> and the last band was uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah. They played drums on a few of their records. Yeah. Um, so Dave I Grohl. like that one song that... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No one knows. No one knows. Yep. No one knows? Yep. Yeah. No one knows. Ah, <gasps> look at me. No, okay. do I get an extra for that? Now, he's he, this guy actually just came out with a signature guitar. Who is the main guitar player in that Santa Live band? He's he's got a he's he just had a record out, came out last year. Um, he's done tons of session work. He was a Santa Live guy. Um, played for Hall and Oates. I think he played for Hall and Oates. Very famous guitar player. Yeah, he brings good things to life. Yep. And he's, he was very entertaining. He'd like in between the commercial breaks, he'd always be rocking with the, the sax player or something like that. I gave a clue to everybody. Did oh. anybody, anybody get it? Highlight. There we go. Rabbi guitar first. rabbi. Boom. G. Smith. Got it. What question uh, are we on? We're on number three. Okay. All right. So Doesn't everybody have a guy. signature guitar nowadays? Rick Beato is getting a signature guitar. I th yeah, I think everyone does. YouTubers getting it now. I don't Everyone's have one. It. Hey, maybe you will one day. <laughs> if I okay. if I if I sign the back of my guitar, do I get a signature guitar? Yeah, there you go. For you, yeah. <laughs> All right, next one. We're going into some uh, Fender. I got a Fender array here. Some Fender questions. Oh, all right. What year was now. Fender Electric Instrument Company formed? What? Uh, year? Oh, hey, put your hand down for a second. It's um, it's actually an anniversary year this year so it kind of gives you a little clue huh. and if uh, you're paying attention youtube got attacked by the the player plus like the mexican kind of ultra stra uh, strats and tellies there yeah right oh guitar rabbi again 46 That's got it. guitar rabbi good job jack i was i was thinking uh 51 too. That's what my guess would have been. So I would have been wrong. No, nope, just hit 75 this year, 75th anniversary. Huh. Yeah. That's okay. Cool. All right. Oh, I think I think I think people I think you guys would get this, but don't tell them yet. But Leo is Fender's middle name. What is his first name? Oh. Huh. Yeah. That's Leo's not his first name. No idea. But if uh, people know Neil know about Leo Fender, they know his initials because he he had some a little project with the uh, oh his initials there too. But um, and if safe Safius? No, I'm guessing. Does it start it, with a G? Nope. Uh, I thought maybe G and L was. No, uh, that's uh, that's actually another. That's kind of another question. Uh, George Fullerton. That was his buddy. He start. He was with um, Fender. Got it. Huh. I have no idea. Starts with a C. It's kind of an old school name. Clarence? You got it. Really? That's that's kind of the first thing that popped into my head. I must Clarence. have read that somewhere. Hey, that's what was me. the 
what was the name of the guardian angel in um, It's a Wonderful Life? That's a bonus question. Anybody? What was the name of the angel in It's a Wonderful Life? It wasn't, it wasn't Clarence, though, right? It was Clarence. Oh, it was? Oh, okay. So that shows you how kind of an old style name it is. All right. So we're going to go deep. We're going to go deep on It's a Wonderful Life trivia real quick. We're going we're gonna to tangent a little bit here. Okay. Oh what, was, what was the name of the druggist? Anybody got that one? Come on. You guys have all seen It's a Wonderful Life, right? No, I've actually haven't. Time. Well, you live in Australia. Christmas. Yeah. I haven't seen it. We haven't got that here yet. All right. Lisa knows that one. Do you know? Do you know the um, the name of the uh, Mr. So Rhymes with flower. Oh, she said Mr. I, a lot of people watch that during Christmas, but I haven't seen that in years. I don't think I've ever seen that film. It is a good movie. Mm, I will have to check it out. Yeah. What is it, Mr. Gower. Mr. Gower is the answer. All right, let's move on with more okay. rock and roll trivia. Number six. So if you're listening, you, could, you should know one, one of them. The two other companies Leo Fender started. So we know it was Fender Instrument Company. Then there was a company after that, after he sold mm. to CBS. And then there's a company that, you know, Mark just said. Mm. Very thick, very big companies. I There's think another one apart from the the yeah. They're both about probably PRS size and sales. Right. Not no as idea. big as Fender or Gibson, but they're big. Lisa owns a twenty fifth anniversary. GNL, okay, right. That's yeah. right. That's one. Yeah, yeah. yeah GNL. I know that's the, the other, other one. one. Do you know it, Simon? You don't know it? No, I don't know it. I, don't, okay, I know I'll the GNL, you, okay. but I don't know the there, other one. Very big. There's a musical. There's a musical that <laughs> is named at, uh, has the same name. A musical has the same name as Leo's other guitar company. Yeah. There you Hamilton. go. Hamilton. It's, not the, it's it. not the Pirates of Penzance. There we go. Music Man, Guitar Rabbi, right? Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. he started that as well. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. Okay, I didn't know. Right. He started Music Man guitar. Yeah. yeah. And then um, they merged with the Ernie Ball. Now they're Ernie Ball Music Man. Right. I didn't know that. Yeah. There you go. All right. Learned something new every day. Some Gibson questions. Okay. So Gibson, very old company, older than Fender. 1902. What city and state before moving to Nashville? Now they're oh, I know in this Nashville. One. But if you have any old Gibsons, they might say it on there too. So you should. Okay, know. we're gonna give you guys. We're gonna we're gonna give you fifty five seconds to answer this one, and we're gonna play another one. This one is by the Frightful Musician. This is a pretty interesting cover of America the Beautiful. So let's uh, let's check this one out. America the Beautiful. <laughs> Bad, not bad. Good job, Ooh. frightful musician. Okay, so where are we in the chat here? Does anybody have the answer Z to uh Zedun? Zedun got a Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So they moved to Nashville. Oh hey Zach, what's up, man? Okay, so only three more three more questions left. Three more questions, okay. Okay. Question number seven. What year was the Gibson Les Paul introduced? The first year that the Gibson Les Paul oh. came out. I, I think so I not, know, but it's not 1959 either. No, it's not 59 definitely not. It's no, quite no. a bit before that. Quite a bit before that. Quite a bit before that. All right, bonus so, question: While you're trying to do this one, 
what year did I play my first gig? <laughs> <laughs> did they have years in those days, Mark? It did, yeah. Was it fifty? Yeah. In the fifties? Eighteen. I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't born until the seventies. I'm a child of 1850, the eighteen fifties. I can do eighteen. I, I can do eighteen fifties trivia. Guitar Rabbi, nineteen fifty two, first Gibson Les Paul. Yes. Nice Guitar Rabbi is cleaning up here. Yeah, he's cleaning yeah. up. He's got four right. Zidun has one. It's almost right, like he's right, got some so sort of. The, the question on, the question on the board right now is: What year did I play my first gig? My first real gig. I'm going to go for 1987. That's right. Oh, I was going to say 89. I was 16, yeah. 1987, yeah. There you go. Nice. 1987, Damn. yeah. Dane at 16, very nice. Yeah. All right, next question, another Gibson question. Only have two more left here. What former Gibson employee was hired by Paul uh, Reed Smith as a I consultant? 594. If you know PRS, you know Gibson, you should know this. I think um, I think Guitar Rabbi might know this. If he knows 52, Gibson Les Paul, you might know this. You might know this too. He's got a PRS too. Ah, uh, there we go. Z Dune. Boom. Z Dune got it. Yep. The McCarty. So Z Dune's got two. Good. All right. So what do we have here? I think is the guitar rabbi in the lead here? Yeah, he's got four. Z Dune's got two. Okay. So switching PRS question. What year? was PRS founded in Annapolis, Maryland. So it was a, it's a Maryland company. Oh, I think I it's, know this one. It's, it's not that old of a company, really. You know. Now, I remember a guy I played in a band with, the first band I played in, actually, a blues band. He bought a PRS. And that was quite a new thing then. Mm -hmm. What year was that? Well, I did my first gig in 1986. Really? Oh, because you were you were little though, because you're you're five years old. I was only really little. Yeah, no, I was only tiny. Yeah, <laughs> you were uh, you were you were just as old. You were just smaller, right? Smaller. I was very small. Uh, oh, these answers. Uh, Guitar oh, Rabbi is closest right now. I yeah, think. Yeah, eighty-seven's close. Seventy-four. Oh, nope. that early. That's way too. Oh, that's I, not that early. It's it's eighties. Oh, right, okay. It's not the seventies. I I've got a guess. Can I make a guess? Yeah. I only go for nineteen. 83. Close. Huh. Nope, it's... Uh, 85. 85. Mark got it. So let me tell you, so Paul Reed Smith, I'm not a, I probably, this is going to go live, so it's probably not a good thing to say. Let's just say, I'm not a huge fan of Paul Reed Smith, the, the, the guy. So I did his clinic a couple years ago. So he's on stage with Victor Wooten oh, cool. and, and all high caliber players. I mean, they had a all-star roster and they're talking about suspended chords and they said um well sus two and he goes what do you mean a sus two because there's no such thing as a sus two and they and he literally argued with victor wooten and i forget who the guitar player was li argued with like the world-class best musicians about the fact that there wasn't a sus two chord there's no such thing as a sus two chord yeah yeah i couldn't he believe does, it he does kind of do that he'll go off on kind of theoretical kind of tangents you know but he's, yeah, he's he's very he's very detail oriented. You know, he's very he has a vision. He's one of those kind of like Howard Hughes kind of visionary type of guys. Sometimes, you know? I mean, he's you know he broke through in you know in the yeah. big leagues on a, a very cornered market. So, yeah. all right, before we have one more question, right? One more. Yep, one more. Yeah, Guitar Rabbi, you're right. He's an odd guy. We're gonna play one more um one more one more submission here, and then we'll do the last question. Sounds good. Cool. Um, where is my? That's another PR. The last one's a PRS question. So all right, can... this is this is Pete, the folk singer, who couldn't attend tonight because he actually is out playing a gig. Rocka. On the first part of the journey, I was looking at all the fun. He was hot 
folk singer all right so we nice are work. down to question nice job pete yeah, you're nice down job, to question pete. number 10. 10 all right so prs question what year did prs introduce their amplifiers so this is a 2000s they That's have amplifiers they have amplifiers it's very popular actually <laughs> Yeah, they sell a lot of them. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I've really got to get. I've really got to get on this guitar stuff. I don't know anything <laughs> about it at all. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We got here. So like while we ask these questions, I should. Uh, Zach says 2003. I think it was later than that. It's a little later than 2003. Yeah. Speaking of Paul, he just did a cool video with, uh, he was trying to get the machine gun tone from Jimi Hendrix there. And he's using one of All his right. PRS 50 watt two heads. And he kind of had a custom made, um, uh, you know, ultra, uh, the, the vibe, the vibe pedal that uh, Hendrix used. You're getting pretty close. Guitar yeah. Rabbi says 2006. Is that right? Not six, not seven. Getting real close. Oh, I'm, I'm guessing eight then. Nope. You like fed it to me. It was like a softball toss. Oh, nine. 2009. Right? You know how I got that? I said eight, and then he went like this. Yeah. That means that means one higher. This yeah, means usually, lower than higher. Yeah, I know higher. Andy, so I know his hand signals. <laughs> we play we play bridge together. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna do a little call to action here. So how about this? I'm gonna keep this more blanket oriented. So we are gonna do another show next Saturday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, uh, that's 9 a.m. Sydney Daylight Time. Are you guys on Daylight Time? I don't even know. I Sydney don't know what time. it's called. Sydney yeah. Time. S Sydney East time. Coast, Sydney. I think it's they'll called. Time like and, and we want to have more, more audience participation. So there's there's not a lot of people on tonight, but I really thank everybody that did show up. And uh, and we really enjoyed doing it. I hope you did too. But uh, So send me a video of yourself playing anything. Play an original song. Play a cover song. Uh, play uh, a riff or a solo. Just send me something, mm -hmm. um, any quality, and I will put it up next week, and I'll give you a shout-out. And there's a couple other cool. shout-outs we want to give, too. We want to give uh, – Simon's uh, wife is an amazing singer. So, Simon, do you want to talk about that? Yes. Yeah, so my wife, Amanda Easton, she is an amazing singer, like you say. She has sung with loads of people over here. Mm -hmm. She is in the, uh, you know, the super A star class of backing vocalists over here. She's done gigs with a whole bunch of people um, all over Australia. And she, when the pandemic, we can't go and do gigs and stuff. So she started doing live streaming and she is at uh mark can you put the link up i think i sent it over to you she, she does a twitch stream three or four times a week i think her next one is on tuesday it's around now time wherever you are in the world but it usually starts around 10 10 30 something like that uh australian time so simon, perfect can you put it evening. in the chat simon and i'll put it up on the board i will put it in the chat here it and, is. and lisa asked so a uh, good point lisa those of you that would like to send something to uh to be on the show next week send it to my email i have it scrolling across the bottom it's mark a renali at gmail.com and if you all have any questions about anything guitar related gear anything like that or you need tabs i don't know how many of you saw my latest video but i have tabs available for all of them um there's some cool cool songs i did this week so mm -hmm. simon is sending and andy what do you got what do you want who do you want to give a shout out to shout out to myself maybe and obviously you guys you definitely catch up mark's latest video is cool i really like um 
that Alice in Chain song you play, you play really nice. You play everything really nice. And Spark Amp is really cool. Getting some good tones out of that Spark Amp. Digital, it's all digital signing. <laughs> I'm actually uh, actually funny. I'm going to put a, a thing together because I've got a, I've got a bunch of students and they always ask, what amp should I buy? Spark is right? always. definitely a good deal. So um, right. the thing I've been recommending for the probably the last maybe five years, a Yamaha maker thing that looks like a toaster was it thr called thr and those yeah. things are amazing they are amazing yeah amazing mm -hmm. but so i'm gonna do and uh, my son actually started playing guitar um nothing to do with me i'd like to add mm -hmm. i let him play whatever he wanted and he decided he was going to learn guitar so i'm teaching the guitar which you know requires i am a quite a patient person so that's good and um he asked for an amp, so I bought him one of those little Boss Katana ones, like it's about this big, and it sounds awesome as well. So I'm going to do a little shootout video between that Boss Katana, the THR, the Yamaha THR, and I've I've got a couple of students who've bought that Spark thing. So you know I'm going to do that a... little Katana you're talking about. You know who that would have been great for? Remember when you were really little years ago? That would have been perfect for you. It would have been like a. It would have been like a. It would like look a, like a Marshall stack combo. Yeah, with, yeah back when you like, were little. You know, yeah. The amp would have been that big, and there I am. You can, you can see how that would work. That would be awesome. So we. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, sorry, I should finish off telling you about Amanda. So mm -hmm. she does her stream on uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Friday night here in Australia. So Friday night for you uh, American probably isn't awesome, but. She does during the day Australia time. So that will be in the evening. So I sent you the link, Mark. Where, where did you send the link? Via what? Did you send it like I put it on chat? On uh, chat. It is basically oh, Twitch. Oh, private chat, right? How oh, do yeah. I, I don't know how to send it on the comments. That's beyond my I, uh, skill. I don't know how to open my private chat. Let me uh, see. Don't worry. How about I tell you? It is. Oh, wait, I got it. I found it. Hold on. I got it. Found it. I'm going to copy this. Ah, oh, mate. We're literally on the vanguard of technology here. <laughs> yep. What, what would you say her voice is like? Who's something someone famous kind of sounds like her? So uh, she is uh, she's a oh. great rock singer. Okay. Um, but she is uh, – so she does an original project as well. She does like uh, electronic sort of jazzy pop stuff. So like nice. uh, a lot like um, uh, Porter's Head, anything from Porter's Head to sort of Gaga oh, okay. is her kind awesome. of zone. And um, uh, she's just put out a new record, actually. She just signed a record deal, which is pretty exciting, wow. with a company in the U.S., and they've put it out on vinyl. Really? What's that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So they've put her new record, Wallflower, Wallflower out on vinyl uh, worldwide, awesome. which is awesome. And, um, yeah, so who does she sound like, singer-wise? Yeah, man, that's a really hard question. Does she sound like a, to ask Lady Gaga? Does she have, like, a rasp? Or no, she's, she's, kind of more she's, a, she's like a pretty ballsy singer so she's, nice. she's got a great voice um definitely worth checking out and well, uh, her website is just amandaeaston.com so you can find your way to twitch through there twitch is a very interesting thing it's like a gamified version of this mm -hmm. it's cool so the, it's kind of problem with cool. vinyl is you know years ago you know when vinyl was the um was the the main medium you could buy like a nice mid-level record player you know, now you can either buy like a piece of garbage, $80 one, you know, in the like, you know, those in the catalog, those catalogs you get on the airplane. Right. Or you could spend, you know, $3,000 on, you know, one of those audiophile systems. They don't it's have not like true. It's not true. It's not true. I've got a nice mid-level record player. A Riga RP1 is what I have. It's a beautiful thing. Riga. I never heard of Riga. Yeah. They're a British yeah. band. A British oh, okay. brand. British. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we get you it. Know, I mean, guitar, rabbi, guitar rabbi wants to know more about Amanda Easton. My my wife's name is Amanda too. Um, and he want, yeah. he says uh, bah, 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 smooth jazz kind of stuff. Yeah, she does. She can do some of that stuff. So she on her stream, she takes requests and all that sort of thing. So what was awesome uh, about six or seven years ago, this is a bit of a story. Just bear with me two seconds. I know we're coming up to the end of the show. So uh, about six or seven years ago, uh, me and my neighbors, we always have like a barbecue once a month and have a bit of a chat and a few drinks and all that sort of stuff. It's quite a fun time. And uh, they were always saying, oh, I used to play in a band. I used to do this because they know obviously I'm a muso. And uh, I said, well, we should put a band together. 
to kind of basically just shut them up because I thought they'd go, oh, no, I don't want to do it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to book a gig. We're going to go and do it. Go and do a gig. You guys pick two songs each. We'll all pick two songs. I'll chart everything for the band and we'll do the show. So we, we formed this sort of seven-piece band, cunningly called the Day Street Band because I live on Day Street. And um, we started doing it and then we came up with the idea. It was just silly just to do it. So we all get started raising money for charity. So we raised money for a women's shelter, a refuge around the corner from our place. So, so far, we've actually raised about 50,000 Australian dollars for the refuge around the corner. Nice. And we do a gig once a year. And uh, it's been a, a great experience. And the cool thing about it was that uh, Amanda, she played a, she played a um, piano when she was a kid, but hadn't played piano properly for 20 years or something, 30 years. And uh, I roped her in to play piano in the Day Street <laughs> Band. And she was really nervous about it because, you know, we had people coming to the show who, like, who are our contemporaries. Mm -hmm. Like, And I was playing bass guitar because... I didn't think it was fair that I played guitar. <laughs> I don't know why. So I'd learned the bass guitar, which was really awesome, actually. And so I played bass. Amanda was playing keyboards. And we had a whole bunch of our neighbors playing. And um, that actually led her to kind of fall back in love with the piano. And now she's doing, like, solo piano gigs, wow. which That's is great. super cool. So on her Twitch stream, she does singing, mm -hmm. plays piano. She has loops and beats and stuff as well. That's cool. That's um, awesome. Yeah, she's... She's uh, amazing. We'll have Ron as a guest. Yeah, one, no, we get one, on okay. One, one night morning. Yeah, so I'll yeah, tell you, it's, it's kind of a little different. So I was in a band in the 90s and 2000s called Paradise Vendors. That was our, you know, our, the band that made it the furthest the band that I was in. And uh, so I was talking, I reconnected with one of the guitar players that played with us for a few years. And he's like, oh, my dream is to, um, is to do a reunion. So I contacted uh, the other guitar player, bass player, uh, Mike, who's on a few of my videos, lives in Nashville, the drummer, and the other guy that played drums for us. And we're going to, New Year's Eve, we're going to do a uh, reunion concert up in, uh, up in Connecticut, where we were uh, originally located. So it's pretty neat. I'm gonna, we're going to do uh, two sets, one with, uh, I'm actually going to play with one band, and then I'm going to play with a completely different band for the second set. Like, it, cause I, I, That's cool. Two, two of us were, were made it through the whole time but uh the rest were you know a changing of changing your group of people so kind of neat yeah lovely all right yes, i that, guess that's it that's we've cool. uh, we've we um, go. yeah we enjoyed this i hope you did and oh and guitar rabbi do me a favor shoot me an email my email mm -hmm. scrolling across the bottom and you want a 25 dollars amazon gift card if amazon doesn't work for you tell me what you want a gift card towards and i'll get that for you okay he's in, all right he's in the states he should that should be good all right you all have a great week. And don't forget, we're back here next Saturday night. And uh, I'll have the topic up on Monday in the, in the, in the YouTube uh, thumb. Awesome. Hard to get that out. I could talk fine until the very end of the show. Thanks, guys. Everybody, good night. And be Check safe. Out. Have a great week. Bye-bye.